Your Majesty, Prime Minister, dear Mette, Ministers, CEOs of INEOS and Winters Aldea, distinguished guests, I'm delighted to join you virtually for this project launch. This is a big moment for Europe's green transition and for our clean tech industry. The first ever full value chain for carbon capture and storage in Europe. You're showing that it can be done, that we can grow our industry through innovation and competition and at the same time remove carbon emissions from the atmosphere through ingenuity and cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what Europe's competitive sustainability is all about. Let me begin by once again applauding our Danish hosts and friends for their long-standing green leadership. In the 1970s, Denmark began investing in offshore wind. 50 years later, thanks to this foresight, we have a time-proven solution to Europe's energy security. Last year, for the first time ever, wind and solar produced more electricity in Europe than any fossil source. And not just that. We are now also using the depleted oil and gas fields in the North Sea to send carbon back down into the ground. It shows once again that the North Sea is increasingly playing a crucial role in Europe's net zero future. This is a story worth sharing. It's a European success story of cross-border cooperation, CO2 that is captured in Belgium and soon Germany, is loaded onto ships in the port of Antwerp Bruges, and stored thanks to Danish pioneering spirit. It is a story that involves dozens of European small businesses, research institutes, and industrial champions a European value chain at its best. This project helps our industry as well as the climate. The Green Sand project aims to store safely and permanently up to 8 megatons of CO2 per year by 2030. Just to put that into perspective, this corresponds to over 10% of Denmark's current annual CO2 emissions, or the yearly carbon footprint of nearly one million Danish citizens. So this project is a significant step towards European carbon neutrality. And the science is clear. Industrial carbon removal is a necessary part of our climate toolbox. The International Energy Agency and the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change are on the same page. To keep global temperatures below 1.5 degrees, we need to remove carbon on top of our efforts to reduce emissions. Because for the European Union to become climate neutral, we need to industrially store around 300 megatons of CO2 annually by 2050. This is a staggering amount. But you are showing how it can be done with European cooperation. As this project demonstrates the tremendous know-how we have in Europe, it is one of the key assets that will help us build the infrastructure and the economy of tomorrow. Supporting Europe's clean tech sector is a priority for the European Commission. That's why I have just proposed a new Green Deal industrial plan. We are making full use of our single market, which will lead to economies of scale and further bring down costs. We're simplifying regulation to incentivize technologies such as carbon removal and to speed up permitting. We're supporting with investment from research and development with Horizon Europe to scaling up clean tech with the Innovation Fund. 
So far, we have awarded over 2.8 billion euros for 24 industrial decarbonization projects. A new innovation fund call is open with a record 3 billion euro budget. And later this year, the Commission will publish a comprehensive strategy on carbon capture, use and storage. Ladies and gentlemen, we have started a mission to secure Europe's industrial edge, create good and meaningful jobs and fix our planet. Carbon removal is part of this mission. I would like, therefore, to thank everyone involved in this project. It is thanks to pioneers like you that Europe is leading the way in the race to net zero emissions. Thank you very much for that.